was right on time. This is for teachers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I supported No Child Left Behind because it seemed seemed like a good idea at the time. And as it happened, uh, so did 90% of the Democrats in Congress and almost 90% of the Republicans in Congress. Uh, who would want to leave any child behind? So the, the promise of the legislation seemed very great. Uh, and many, many people continued to believe in it for a long time. I stopped believing in it, and many of its original supporters still support it. Getting comments from teachers and friends of, who were teachers and parents from around the country saying kids are being over-tested. Then I continued to hear from many people that things were dropping out of the curriculum, that there was less attention to history and to science. I noticed that uh, student scores on the International Test of Science actually dropped for the eighth graders. Uh, but more importantly, I was at a, at a conference uh, at the American Enterprise Institute, which is a conservative think tank, and they were looking at the results of No Child Left Behind in 2006. And I expected the papers were going to be celebratory, and quite to the contrary, they were all saying it wasn't working. The choice provisions were not working. The children were not ch choosing to leave their school. And the uh, tutoring provisions were not working. And listening to one ac account after another, by the end of the day, I had the task of summarizing. And I said, NCLB is failing. Um, that The following fall, which is 2007, the the national test scores came out, the federally sponsored NAEP test scores came out, showing that there was very, very little progress. So I wrote an article at that time uh, that in the New York Times saying, get Congress out of the classroom, uh, which fundamentally said, no child left behind is not working, and this uh, we should go back to the drawing board. So when people say that I've made a dramatic U-turn, uh, they haven't been reading what I've been writing over the past three years. This, is not, this has been an evolutionary process, not a an overnight bolt from the blue. I think that No Child Left Behind created a, a totally utopian, unrealistic expectation that by 2014, 100% of all children would be proficient and that schools that were not able to meet an unrealistic goal would be punished. So it created a very punitive uh, language around schooling that said that if, if you don't meet this utopian goal, your school will be closed, your teachers will be fired, everybody involved in the process is somehow tainted. And it has created a tremendous momentum for privatizing public education. So I think that all in all we see, uh, I think, a danger right to the heart of, of public education as something that we should be improving and not destroying. Uh, there was one projection by a group of, of social scientists in California that by the year 2014, nearly 100% of all elementary schools in the state of California will be failing schools. This is a way to destroy any confidence in public education and to set up public education to be privatized. I recall that at the time it was passed, I was at a, a conference in Washington, D.C., and there was a panel of senators who were enthusing about the law, and I stood up in the audience and said, do you think that this is realistic to set a goal of 100% proficiency by 2014, since no state and no nation has ever reached even close to that. And the senator, who was a very smart man, said, um, it's always good to have goals. Uh, we have to fundamentally rethink where we are, and we have to th rethink the whole the rhetoric that we use about punishing schools and firing teachers. We have to back away from this notion that uh, that schools will be held accountable in a way that no other public institution is. Uh, and I think that the, the basic approach ought to be uh, how do we take the information that we have from tests and use it to help schools, use it to help teachers, use it to help students, instead of taking the information to punish. And if we can change that rhetoric from punishment to support, uh, we'll be in a much better place five years from now. One of the things I tried to do in the book is to show how limited the tests that we use are, uh, that they're really a snapshot of performance. Uh, that the information can be used in ways th that's helpful. I think the information is sometimes very important to have in terms of whether kids are moving forward or backward, but we have to take it with a grain of salt, recognizing that uh, the same student could take the same test a week later and get a different score. So if you understand that the information is uh, subject to uh, random error, that, the, uh, that there's a, a margin of error in, in whatever results you're having, uh, then you'll be more cautious in applying harsh judgments based on this information. My overall reaction is that uh, words on a page can often be very alluring. The real proof of the pudding is how does it affect 
uh, teachers and schools and children. And just as No Child Left Behind sounded good in 2002 and turned out to be, I think, a, a very bad deal, uh, we'll have to see how this works out. But we also have to look very carefully at any provision in this law that will lead to closing of schools, firing of teachers, and harsh judgments made on all the people who participate in the educational process. When we talk about accountability these days, accountability has become a synonym for punish, punishment. Who are we going to punish if kids don't come to school? Who are we going to punish if kids have low test scores? Who are we going to punish if their test scores don't go up? Uh, I think it would be much more productive if we said, if, if there's a lot of transiency, let's try to understand why. Let's, uh, let's give support to the teachers who are dealing with the most challenged kids. Let's give support to the teachers in the schools that are dealing uh, with kids who have uh, multiple problems because they're poor, because their parents are, are migrant workers, because all sorts of issues in their lives. And let's not use these as excuses, but let's also not have utopian goals that we can use to uh, close down public education.